Shocker, World War III could start in 2526. It's hard to find in the world more complicated relations than those that have developed between the two oldest states of Southeast Asia, Japan and China. All travelers note the fact of their inhabitants' fierce, exactly fierce dislike for each other. For centuries, these states competed for dominance in East Asia. From the middle of the 19th century to 1949, China, which has a thousand-year history, was a semi-colony of Japan. This time, the Chinese caused centuries of humiliation, and they have no intention of forgiving it. Thanks to state propaganda, the Chinese have a stereotype of a Japanese cannibal who hates his neighbors, cheats a lot, and is preparing to take revenge for World War II. The situation is aggravated by China's desire to become the world's economic leader. Of course, Japan actively resists this. The warring parties are separated by the South China Sea, which could become the epicenter of the beginning of the Third World War. Not Ukraine, not the Balkans, but the South China Sea. Therefore, the navies of both countries are of paramount importance. In this video, we take a look at how Japan can counter Japan's growing Chinese naval ambitions. Spoiler, surprisingly a lot. Many of our viewers will probably be surprised that it's even a lot. The Japanese Navy was once large and formidable and served as Tokyo's most important foreign policy tool. With its help, Japan won victories over China and Tsarist Russia and at the initial stage of World War II, plagued the US and Great Britain. Americans still nervously recall Pearl Harbor, but those times are long gone. The victors in that war left Japan with a tiny naval force clearly insufficient for self-defense. But as 1945 fades further into the past, the country is increasingly building up its armed forces. So what does Japan's navy look like now? You'll be amazed, but already in 2000 under the modest name of the self-defense navy was the world's fourth largest navy. Now it's second only to the United States and China in the number of large warships with a displacement of more than 5,000 tons. Its power is already enough to sweep away the Russian Pacific Navy, and it's capable of fighting the Chinese naval forces on equal footing even without U.S. assistance. And if we take into account the undoubted assistance of the U.S., which will be provided in case of a Sino-Japanese conflict, the victory will be for the land of the rising sun. By the way, the Chinese gave such a beautiful poetic name to the country, and Chinese Nihon exactly means the land of the rising sun. What do the Japanese have today and what are their plans for the near future? The largest in the Japanese fleet now are two Izumo-type helicopter carriers, which entered service in 2012 and 2015 respectively. These are giants with a length of 813 feet and a total displacement of 27,000 tons, capable of taking on board an aviation group of 28 aircraft, helicopters, converted planes, fighters, Initially, their main armament was 14 SH-60 attack helicopters purchased in the U.S. with a solid range and capable of taking on board both missile and torpedo weapons. At the same time, five years ago, Tokyo announced its intention to acquire a full-fledged, in fact, aircraft carrier, for which they decided to re-equip one of the available helicopter carriers, Izumo. It should be recalled that after the loss of World War II, Japan pledged not to build aircraft carriers, this ban was not accidental, because during the fighting, Japanese aircraft carrier formations caused the Allies much grief. And now, on October 3, 2021, a historic event took place. For the first time since 1945, armed planes took off from the deck of a Japanese warship. However, a pair of F-35Bs that took off from the Izumo belonged to the Americans, and the ship itself continues to be officially listed as a helicopter destroyer so technically the ban has not been violated. Back in 2019, Japan decided to buy 42 fighter jets of the above-mentioned F-35B type, capable of short takeoff and vertical landing from the US. The first deliveries are expected to start this year. Two years ago, the refit of the second helicopter carrier Kaga, which is of the same type as Izumo, also began. Japan's expected to receive its second aircraft carrier in 2025. The Japanese Defense Ministry has two more vessels at its disposal that can be converted into aircraft carriers. Helicopter carriers of the Hayuga type, commissioned in 2009 to 2011. The main backbone of the Japanese Navy is made up of guided missile destroyers. Tokyo has eight of them at its disposal, plus two training destroyers of the Maya, Haguro, Atago, Ashigara, Kongo, Kirishima, Miyoko, Tiokai, 
Harakaze, and Shimakaze types. Japanese URO destroyers are equipped with standard anti-ship and anti-aircraft missiles of various types used in NATO and are integrated into a single system of information exchange and target designation with other fleets of the Alliance. First of all, the Otago-type destroyers equipped with the Aegis Combat Information and Control System are of interest. The standard displacement of the ship is 7,750 tons, attract attention and powerful destroyers of the type Congo, a total of four ships, which are analogous to the American guided missile destroyers of the type Arleigh Burke. Then the Japanese had 28 smaller conventional destroyers of five different types, which entered service from 1988 to 2019. Their main purpose is anti-submarine defense and destruction of enemy surface ships. There are also eight frigates of the Mogami and Abukuma types, which have the same functions as the destroyers but are smaller and more modestly armed. In terms of the total number of frigates and destroyers, the Japanese Navy now exceeds the fleets of Great Britain and France combined. We cannot fail to mention Japan's 26 submarines, of which four are training submarines. Their number will increase shortly. All of them are diesel-electric, armed with torpedoes and anti-ship missiles. The newest of them, the submarine Taige, which entered service in 2022, favorably differs from previous types of greater secrecy and less noise, which makes it difficult to detect. The Japanese plan to build a total of seven such ships. The remaining six will enter service between March 2023 and March 2026. Fleet aviation currently consists of 138 combat aircraft of various types, not counting auxiliary and 112 helicopters. First of all, this is an impressive number of P-3C anti-submarine aircraft. This is a licensed version of the American Lockheed P-3 Orion. Also noteworthy is the large number of different versions of the Mitsubishi H-60 multi-role helicopter, Japanese versions of the American Sikorsky SH-60 Seahawk, which in turn is based on the famous UH-60 Blackhawk. And let's not forget that 42 F-35B fighters are on the way. The personnel of the Japanese Navy has more than 50,000 people. But the Japanese are not going to stop there. On December 16, 2022, the Japanese government approved the National Security Strategy, which provides, in particular, for strengthening the Navy. In particular, it stipulated that Tokyo reserves the right to launch counterstrikes against targets in the territory of a potential enemy. At the same time, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida ordered to ensure in five years, i.e. in 2027, the financing of the military budget at the level of 8.9 trillion yen or $64.8 billion at the current exchange rate. This is about 1.7 times more than last year. This year, the amount is 6.8 trillion yen or about $49 billion. A significant part of the increase in military spending is planned to be spent on the purchase of new weapons. How will this affect the Navy? First, the Japanese plan to build two missile defense ships. These will be real giants with a standard displacement of about 20,000 tons. The first of them will be commissioned at the end of 2027 and the second at the end of 2028. They'll be equipped with a particularly powerful missile defense system, Aegis Ashore, which was initially supposed to be placed on land, but then considered it best to equip the ships with them. Also, their large size will allow these ships to accommodate numerous silos for various types of missiles. In addition to providing the needs of missile defense, they'll also be able to launch missiles capable of striking long-range strikes against land and sea targets, being out of range of the enemy. The Japanese Defense Ministry notes that these ships are being built with an eye on primarily North Korea, which is actively developing its missile development and periodically launches ballistic missiles toward the Sea of Japan. Accordingly, the new warships are expected to be able to intercept North Korean missiles flying at high altitudes. In addition, Japanese Defense Minister Yasukazu Hamada said that these ships will be equipped to intercept hypersonic missiles available to China, Russia, and North Korea. Secondly, the Japanese are going to build several more Mogami-class frigates. In total, they want to have eight such ships by 2025, which they intend to replace the most obsolete destroyers. Mogami is a fairly large vessel of 5,500 tons displacement with a 30-knot speed, built with stealth technology and well-armed. But the program of building multi-purpose frigates will not end here. The Japanese intend to have 22 such ships by 2033. Third, the Japanese wanted to provide their fleet with a reliable stockpile of weapons. 
In February, it became known that Japan intends to buy from the United States for 211.3 billion yen, or about $1.6 billion, 500 ship-based missiles Tomahawk of the latest version of Block 5 more smart and low observable than their predecessors, capable of hitting large surface moving targets at a distance of up to a thousand miles. In addition, Japan plans to increase the range of its Type 12 anti-ship missiles to 600 miles. They're expected to be deployed on land starting in fiscal year 2026, on ships starting in 2028, and on aircraft starting in 2030. We've said many times in our videos that a global reformatting of the world is coming in the 30s, and as you can see, Japan is preparing for it intensively. Moreover, the Japanese authorities have officially declared that in case of a Chinese attack on Taiwan, Japan will not stand aside. After all, if Taiwan falls, the islands on the far southwest tip of the Japanese archipelago may be unprotected. China can block vital trade routes, increase pressure around the disputed Senkaku Islands, and in other ways pin down its historical rival. The U.S. will also stand up for Taiwan, realizing perfectly well that if China seizes this land, it automatically becomes the number one power in the world. The U.S. can still afford to lose in Ukraine, but not in Taiwan. And this is essentially World War III. An attack on Taiwan may already follow in 2025-2026 if Russia wins in Ukraine and thereby inspires China. You see how everything's tied up and what thin ice civilization is walking on now? What do you think about the confrontation between Japan and China? Will there be one, and if so, when? Write about it in your comments below. If you enjoyed our video, give it a like as a reward for our labor and support of our work. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel so as to not miss new interesting videos about modern weaponry.